Okay. Okay. Uh, here we are again. New day. We'll see how this works. Um, we're, giving, we're giving Thursday a chance because it's kind of like Tuesday, but later in the week. Um, so here we're giving it a chance. Uh, I was going to make something completely completely new today, but it's only been two days since the last thing, so I've still got leftovers. So I'm going to use leftovers, which might end up being a theme for uh, for uh, Thursdays. See what we can do with whatever is left from the fun on Tuesday. Or prep something on Tuesday and then carry it through to Thursday. And finish it up. That might be fun too. Um, the uh, the key ingredient I'm working with here is the leftover bison ribeye steak, uh, which I haven't done anything with since the salad on Tuesday. So that's what it's going to be, and I'm going to make a hybrid of a buffalo it, it sounded like a pun in my head and I don't know that it sounds like a pun when I say it out loud but I'm making a Philly cheese steak sandwich and also a buffalo sandwich but with bison so it's a buffalo buffalo uh, it's dumb uh, the buff it's the buffalo buffalo sandwich. Uh, and I'm gonna make my own buffalo sauce because I don't have any buffalo sauce, but I've got some spicy stuff and I've got some butter and I've got some vinegar and I've got all the parts. So I guess I'll just get. Uh, slowly crack and this is uh, as you can see i've used up a good majority of what was left of the tuna uh, that's going to stay there and i'll have that i don't know with lunch or something tomorrow here's our bison steak uh which hasn't even been moved at all since uh it was placed there on the uh the tuesday Keep Tiny Whisk handy. It's going to be needed for the buffaloing of the buffalo later in when we when we buffalo. Uh, but for starters, I'm just going to take this remaining steak and slice it up into just very thin pieces. Because we're going to want pretty thin little slices for my future plans. I'm going to add more heat to it as well. I know it's actually came out, except for these funny bits on the end, came out quite pretty good. So... And doing this right away will eat up some time, give people a chance to get in here. Cut the uh, slightly overcooked end piece as well. I think I'm just going to do the whole thing. Uh, no leftovers, no saving it. It's already well salted and seasoned from Tuesday. Eat this little end bit. Mm, not quite as nice cold, but we'll fix that. So, I actually don't know what the traditional cut of meat for a Philly cheesesteak is. 
the ones you buy pre like a pre packaged use this to make cheesesteak sandwiches type thing are uh, shaved incredibly thinly so that I don't think it matters. So it's probably made from some really cheap, tough cut that they then shaved within an inch of its life. Uh, which I imagine means that any cut could work. Just cut it thinly. There's a little tendon on the end there that even my super sharp knife doesn't seem to want to go to. So let's take that off. And another little piece. I guess I'm going to end up trimming all of these once I've got them sliced. It's because I don't want these uh, little gnarly bits in my finished sandwich. And they're pretty visible because they're uh, bright white. And I suppose that's uh, what I get for having cheap meats as well. Because they're never going to be really super nice. There's always going to be weird little gnarly pieces. That's why they're cheap. So let's just take those little tendons off the end. And I'm pretty sure that's what that... Oh, that Some of them look almost not tendony. I know from biting into it uh, when I made it initially that they're pretty. This little this thing that's running along the edge here is pretty tough. It's not a fat cap. It's definitely a. piece of connective tissue that doesn't want to cook down. Probably would cook, would soften up if I cooked it for uh, ages and ages, but that would ruin the rest of it. So off it goes. And my knife skills are showing in that these are not sliced into even pieces at all. that. Are you tough? You are. It makes a little crunch when I try to uh, slice it. Slice through it. But that one's not. That one came apart. So I guess it goes only partway through. Eh, it's all going to get uh, sort of smashed together later anyways, so they don't have to be perfect. Steak has already been through its nice plating as slices. Now we're using up leftovers, which is uh, by its very nature a little bit of a coarser treatment. But I don't want to lose any of this nice meat, so have some little little end pieces mixed in with our big middle pieces. Some of these ones at the end here were quite gnarly. They're more uh, gnarl than nice meat in a couple of these. Especially that right there. Ugh. Ugh.
but I don't know that I don't think that's a lot of loss considering it's almost entirely this really crunchy piece of tendon. And considering this is our second meal made from the same piece, so And uh, some end pieces. Okay. I am going to just discard all of that tendon. Put the sliced meat into a bowl. To warm up a little bit so it's not completely fridge cold when I end up cooking it later. I'm just going to have it rest on the counter. while I work on other elements. Uh, and put the remaining piece of tuna away. Our main event today is actually going to be making my own sauce. And I have a general idea of what to do with it. Uh, I'm going to start with some hot peppers from the big tube of hot peppers. Now, I've got two different kinds in here. I've got these big ones that were very inconsistently hot when I first got them and tried them. And then I've got the small ones that have all sunk to the bottom that are very consistently hot, spicy peppers. So I think I'm going to dig down to make sure I get a couple of these guys, these uh, smaller, skinnier ones. And we're going to use our seeds and everything. I've also got a jalapeno over here, over here. It's also kind of dried up. This was a nice green jalapeno when I bought it, and then I kind of forgot about it, and it shriveled up. It's not hard. It's not grindable like the uh, small peppers are. So probably going to use that up and just figure out what to do with it. Problem solving. Using up ingredients that you've just kind of neglected but haven't really gone off. Now, hot peppers are a little bit plasticky on the outside. And when you're grinding something that really resists the grind, I'm, I like to add some salt. Salt acts as an abrasive to help you really get in with the uh, stuff. But I want this to be ground pretty finely, actually. And I'd like to break up the seeds if possible and really get the uh, the hot oils out of it. You'll see how much I pepper spray myself. I should do this not on the board because it's sliding around. <coughs> oh, I'm already pepper spraying myself with the the pepper dust. Oh my god. <coughs> oh my god. Oh my god, it's hot. It's hot in my nose. Wow. That went fast. Woof. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I want other ingredients in here though, so dried onion granules. Oh, all right, I'm going <coughs> to... Oh, definitely uh, went hard with that pepper. 
garlic powder. Black pepper. Ooh. There's already salt in it. We're going for like a buffalo flavor profile, so I don't want to go crazy with adding a bunch of spices to it. Ooh. It gets in your nose though. Wow, it's got a it's got a punch. Let's see. I want the small pan. Oh. Oh my god. This keeps up going to be sneezing all day from the pepper. Let's see. The small pan is in the sink right now. So let's do it in the Medium, small saucepan. Ooh. Now, the basis of your typical buffalo sauce is hot sauce, like a vinegar-based hot sauce, and butter. So I'm going to start by oops, melting down some butter. I've got these convenient little half sticks that are a quarter cup pre-measured each. So I'm going to go with a quarter cup of butter as our first item of actual cooking. Uh, and I'm going to do this on below medium low because I don't want the butter browning. I want it melting pretty gently. So on my on my dial, it's a four. All right, I'm going to mute myself for a second and uh, blow my nose. Okay. Okay. There it is. Okay. I couldn't see my sound uh, clicking on. So, the basis of your cheesesteak sandwich is steak, thinly sliced steak. Uh, I'm going to be using a sliced cheese that I've already got on hand, uh, which is some Swiss. So we're going to end up having to probably melt it under the griddle to get it to melt properly, because I don't have any of that soft, like... American y melting cheese on hand. I've got some brie. We could try to make a cheese blend. I could try to make a cheese blend. So, uh, my first step is I'm melting the butter, and then I'm going to add these dry spices to that butter and get them toasting and infusing into the the butter before I add anything else to it. They will it's unsalted butter as well. So the salt that I added here is going to season the butter. Uh, most of the spices, especially hot pepper, the uh, spice components are soluble in oils. So they will actually get picked up by the butter and do a, a proper infusion. 
but they gotta be introduced to each other. So we are just kind of, and I, and I don't want to be super distracted because I don't want to burn the butter at all. The butter needs to just be melted and warm for the most part. I've also should probably get out my vinegar because you need vinegar in a hot sauce as well. Your typical like bottled hot sauce is made of mostly hot peppers and vinegar. Uh, I've got some nicer vinegars, but I think I just want to use plain old distilled white vinegar. I've got some rice vinegar. I've got some apple cider vinegar. We could try those. Buffalo. Buffalo, buffalo. Um, here's the buffalo. Uh, also, also, here's the start of the buffalo. Also, you're here now. Hi, welcome in. Uh, uh, I've started by slicing up the uh, leftover bison from Tuesday. Now I'm melting some butter so I can start constructing a buffalo sauce over there in the pan. Uh, so I'm slowly melting some butter over medium-low heat, and I've got a spice blend here of these red chilies. These red chilies. Um, some black pepper, some garlic powder, some dried onion, and some salt. And I've uh, pepper sprayed myself with it a little bit because I uh, ground it into a fine dust. And it hurts my nose. And I'm just gently melting the butter because I don't want to brown or burn the butter. I just want it to get all nice and melty, and then I'm going to add these spices to it. And do a nice sort of gentle infusion. The uh, plan is pretty straightforward, actually. I'm trying to use up leftovers. I'm trying to use up some things that I've got sitting around. I've got this uh, this bell pepper. Switch between all these cameras. I've got this bell pepper. It's going a little bit wrinkly, so I want to use it up. So we're going to use that whole thing. I've got the leftover meat. Got to use that up. And I'm still brainstorming add-ons. Uh, I've got I've got a main idea that's gonna take a good amount of the time. So, oh, but I'm kind of sniffly because of the uh, the the pepper in my nose. So our butter is looking completely melted. I'm adding my spices. Ooh. Um, well, a Philly cheesesteak sandwich has sauteed peppers and onions on it. So that's the vegetables I've got planned. Um, we're making a sandwich. Uh, I need large whisk. Unfortunately, I think tiny whisk is just going to keep us company today. Because the whisking is going to have to happen over here in this pan. Uh, 
Uh, so yeah, that's the plan. I'm going to be making a buffalo buffalo cheesesteak sandwich with the two kinds of buffalo. Um, I should have known I was going to get my, uh, my nose all, all snoofy. And I didn't plan for it at all. I think I got some on my fingers too, so I'm afraid to, uh, touch my face with my fingers. In theory, buffalo sauce, making your own buffalo sauce is actually really quick and easy if you're just using butter and an existing hot sauce. Because <laughs> then it's just a mix, a mix together. Don't even need to heat it, actually. Uh, you just need to melt the butter. So, uh, we're also uh, testing out a new day today. I've uh, swapped, fr swapped Fridays to Thursdays because I feel like people don't show up on Friday. But now I've got to wait for people to rediscover me on Thursdays. So I also have been looking at my uh, analytics. You're here nice and early, um, but I seem to be peaking around 5:30. So. And then I wrap up about an hour later. Uh, I've just added a half of a quarter cup of vinegar. Which is immediately making it more of a smooth look. Less lumpy from the uh, dried pieces in there. This buffalo sauce is going to at no point be perfectly smooth because it's got little flakes of pepper floating around in it. But we can get it less hideous. I've also got some regular hot sauce. Uh, just some uh, crystal up here that I can supplement with. Just some plain old crystal hot sauce that we can supplement with and, and try to build this up. Uh, so yeah, uh, I want, I kind of want to slice my vegetables. I'm adding some crystals to this right away. Uh, the thing about buffalo sauce is You want it to be hot, so. So why hold back? Ooh, that immediately gives it a little bit more of a, a, a punch. I also want it to emulsify a little bit, so it's because it keeps trying to re-separate. So think of what I see Worcestershire sauce in a lot of these uh, recommended recipes as well. So I'm going to give us a little bit of Worcestershire, not a ton, but not a skimp either. Uh, I've also got more butter if we need more butter. I 
just I wonder if a little bit of cornstarch would be what I'm thinking of. Something to just kind of pull it together a little bit. And some red dye, some red dye number 40 to uh, throw in there to make it really scream buffalo. Um, what do you like in your buffalo sauce? Uh, the vinegar away. I keep my vinegar in this weird little cupboard above the uh, refrigerator. I should keep paper towels too. You've never had buffalo sauce. Well, that's surprising. I've never made my own buffalo sauce, but I've certainly had quite a lot of it. <laughs> um, I'm going to take that off the heat and let it kind of rest on the side there. And I'm going to bring us back over to our main countertop and start slicing veggies. Now we want, uh, I like my veggies for this to have that slow, softened up mess to them. Not like caramelized, but not a fast fry. Bit of a, a bit of a slower treatment, so they're 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 nicely softened up. Pick out a appropriately sized onion. Ended up not using this bowl, so that bowl's going to be my veggie scraps. So to get the consistency I'm looking for, I need to slice my onions and my pepper quite thinly and cook them on medium-low heat as well. This would be the kind of thing you would do like on the griddle with the meat. They'd get real steamy. paper on them. Okay. Oh, part of that one. Um, I don't have a griddle. I'm doing all these, in sep these ingredients kind of separately, so I'm just going to pretty gently just give a really thin, thin slice of the onion. Then we'll get that pepper over here. Do the same treatment there. The pepper is orange, so this it's a finished sandwich with the orange pepper and the orange sauce is going to be very orange. Um, so maybe I should come up with something green just to give it a, a, a contrast, a pop. Hmm. I 
dragon. I need a bowl to catch these guys in as well. So we'll get that. I got a new mixing bowl, by the way. It's a uh, this is the one I had before. These are the previous ones I had before that I use all the time, and I've got a one that's about half the size, a little baby mixing bowl. Has thus far not been used for anything, but I'm sure a time will come when the little baby size is exactly what I need uh, for some something. I've also got a new cast iron pan. Uh, I found a really large one that uh, is in good shape. I just need to clean it. So we haven't got that far yet. It's in the other room. Okay. Thinly sliced onion. Get the uh, little scraps of onion paper off of my cutting board. It could match Tiny Whisk. That's actually probably a good idea. Uh, tiny Whisk and the Tiny Mixing Bowl. Pepper. I think this pepper might have a baby pepper inside of it. Because I'm bumping into something as I try to cut around it like a pumpkin. Oh, no, it just has a really thick ribs. It's got, wow, six ribs? I've never seen a bell pepper with that many ribs in it. It's usually. Three or four. Huh. I did get one not too long ago that only had two. That was also unusual. I'm getting some uh, mutant bell peppers. It's gone wrinkly because it's kind of dried out. Um, but nothing wrong with it. It just makes it a little bit resistant to cutting because it uh, kind of flexes, kind of squishes, rather than uh, staying nice and crisp against the knife. Uh, and if you're going to serve it something fresh and crisp, it, it wouldn't work. You'd, you'd notice that it's soft. But I'm going to be sautéing this anyway, so it's going to be re- softened no matter what state it was to begin with so there's going to be no noticeable difference when we get to the end that it was a little over the hill at the start a little flower bud out the middle there i need to be careful i'm cutting towards my fingers with my sharpest knife uh, like a fool. I should be cutting away from my fingers so that if I slip, I don't <laughs> uh, violate terms of service by spurting blood all over the place. Um... <laughs> Uh, and get the little seeds out of there. Even though we just put a bunch of seeds in the other one, I don't want the bell pepper seeds because they don't have any flavor at all. Uh, and I want this to be sliced pretty thinly as well. So attempt to replicate the thinness of the onion slices. I wonder if I should do it the other way. I 
getting those seeds out of a bell pepper. They all want to stick right to the sides, the cut sides, because they're wet. And the seeds are so small and flat that they're just such a pain to get a hold of. You end up having to just like scrape them off. But I don't want them in there because they're these little hard, tasteless things that'll mess up my nice pieces of pepper. So, what are you going to do? Cutting it this way, the long way, is definitely the better option. I get nicer pieces of pepper. Although it does feel a little more time consuming because I have to be more careful. with the knife, especially the small knife. I think if I used the big knife, now that the small knife is dirty, I'm just going to stick with it. But I think if I used my big chef's knife, this would be a much faster process. It came out a little bit thick. Oh boy, long periods of silence while I carefully pick seeds away from my bell peppers. That's her engaging viewing. I sure hope somebody drops by right when I'm totally silent with my hands off the top of the screen. Oh, you can't even see. Ugh, you should have said something. Here I am, working away, cutting peppers, talking. The whole time the camera was pointed at my face. Not even at the workspace. You couldn't see anything. It's even worse viewing. Now we at least have a, a, a workspace. Ugh, that's like 20 minutes of me just, just chattering and leaning over from the side, pointing at things and talking about what I'm doing. Nobody can see it. Now I got to go back and figure out how long that was because... <laughs> Well, uh, I sliced up the pepper, but uh, for the most of the time, it was pointed at my face, not the uh, worktop. Okay, well, those are the vegetables. Uh, I've got more than I'm probably going to need, but that's fine. We're going to take us back to the stove. We're going to grab a pan and some more butter and we will do a saute medium low get the butter melted 
gently soften up these veggies. Take a peek at my uh, my sauce. It's kind of separaty still. Um, I'm going to toss a little bit of cornstarch into my sauce, which I and move that to the front burner there so that you guys can see it. I'm just gonna put a little bit of starch in there to uh, try and thicken it up a little bit. Because it needs to be a coating that will stick to the meat. I should also probably taste it. I'm just trusting that it's good because I've been putting tasty things into it, but I haven't actually tasted it. is probably a mistake. So let's do that now. Clean off my small tasting spoon. Oh. Oh, it's hot. It's very spicy. It's spicy and it's vinegary. It's kind of harsh. Not, I'm not, I'm not sold on it. I need to mellow it out with something. I think. Um, what else could go into? Where's my last thing? Um, Uh, back on some slight heated goes so that I can add things to it and think about it. I'm sure it'll be better once I just throw the meat in and, and like toss it around. Um, time to think about what I've done with my life. I could make a purple cabbage slaw to go on the side of this. I think. I got any carrots? One carrot. I can do this. I could do this. Oh. I'm going to get the vegetables into that pan once that butter has finished melting and get them started. And then we can think about a slaw based side of some sort. while they kind of uh, soften up and get, get cooking. Oh, yeah, I've also got this uh, dried-up jalapeno. Um, I was 
going to use that today. I guess I'm not going to use that today. Because there's plenty of pepper. Hmm. I'm using it. Get the seeds out of it. The jalapeno peppers, if you didn't know, they're almost always sold green, but they'll turn red if you let them. And the uh, the flavors become more pronounced. Ooh, I'm really gonna have to wash my hands today. I'm just getting all up in the pepper with my finger fingernails. That's gonna be danger zone later. <laughs> I imagine that butter has melted behind me. Uh, and yes, it has. So. Those guys get in the pan. Get out a spatula. We start pushing them around. And I should probably hit it with some salt to get the uh, moisture coming out of them so they don't brown real fast, but uh, soften up nicely. Still, still sniffly, still sniffly from that, that peppering myself at the beginning. Not been sniffly all day, and then I. You inhale one hot pepper, and then, and then it's all it's all over. Who to thunk? So, uh, I'm going to take my now de-seeded bright red jalapeno pepper. Get this down here, because nothing is happening over there. Too hot. You're just warm. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm just going to thinly slice this and chuck it in with the uh, onions and the bell pepper. It'll give us a little bit of color because it's red, a little bit more flavor, and a little bit of heat. We're making a spicy sandwich. Uh, there's no way to avoid the fact that I'm making a spicy sandwich. So, may as well go all in. So our predominant colors are going to be red and orange and more orange and some brown. Uh, I don't know why I decided to use everything with a little paring knife today, but I did.
So onions and peppers here are going to have to cook relatively slowly. As I've mentioned, I want them, we're not going for a caramelized, but we're going for in that sort of direction with it. Just not going to go all the way there. So they're going to soften up, the sweetness is going to come out, but we're not going for a lot of browning. Ideally, there'll just be a tiny bit of texture left when I'm done with them. Uh, I don't want to prep the bread until I'm ready to start constructing the sandwich. And I don't want to put the meat in the sauce until the last moment either. Because I don't want to overcook the meat. I guess what I really want to do is just keep fiddling with this sauce until I get it just right. So, I guess that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, do a little bit of side research. I don't have any Frank's Red Hot to uh, cheat with. Let's see, they call for more sauce than butter. I could do that. Uh, there's substantially less of the actual crystal hot sauce in there than there is butter. And that might be what's causing it to not want to form nicely. So I will add another dose to it to try to get it. pulling together a little bit more. Looks like the butter's also trying to form a skin, almost like I've built a hot pudding. A spicy pudding. Instead of a sauce. But that's um that's not too far off of the goal because we want it to be that sort of thick creamy texture. Looking better already. Should take it back off the heat. Um, I think I may have cooked some of the vinegar off as well. I simmered it a little bit too much. So rather than get out the big jug of vinegar, I'm going to add a dash of rice wine vinegar. to re-up the vinegariness along with the uh, added crystal that added more vinegariness. Of course, I moved back to the burner where nobody can see anything because uh, that guy is still on. I want to use, really, I want that just to be on mega low. That's the texture I was looking for, though. It doesn't have, uh, like, little pools of oil. I'm going to call that good. I should taste it. Don't call it good until you've tasted it. Oh, sharp. It's actually less spicy now. Uh, I diluted it out a little bit, so I'm going to add some ground 
pepper to it. Uh, but it's got a good acidic, sharp punch to it. Um, and I'm adding in a little bit of uh, ground chipotle, which will also give it a smokier element. I definitely want a cooling, creamy side dish for this. So I think we're going to make that slaw. After all. Which we've got plenty of time for because this... Peppers and onions here still need to soften up more. Thing is, I don't have green cabbage. Ideally, it, I could would make a slaw with green cabbage, and it would give us a color contrast too. But all I've got is the purple cabbage, so we're making purple slaw. Get back over to the countertop. I've got the end little center knob of a purple cabbage. Which is still probably more than I need for one serving of slaw. So I'm going to do what I always do and peel some leaves off instead of cutting into it. I have found that a head of cabbage keeps at least as long as I've ever seen. I, I've, I've never had one go bad on me in the fridge. As long as I peel away the leaves instead of cutting into it. Once you cut into it and there's all those cut surfaces exposed, that's where it'll start going off. Um, but the just peel off of the outer leaves and use them, work your way in. They get kind of really scrunched up toward the middle. It becomes harder and harder as you get into the middle. But um, like I've, I've, I've actually never had... I'm assuming they go off at some point. Uh, but in the time it takes me to go through one, I've never had one go off. So that's my pro cabbage keeping tip for the day. I've grabbed the four outer leaves, and I've still got a little knob left. I think the little knob next time is just going to be chopped up, because there's not enough there for another step. But, yeah. Uh, and I almost always go with the purple cabbage, uh, because of the, the rule that darkly colored fruits and vegetables have a lot more nutrients in them, even though cabbage is snow white on the inside. Um, I can't imagine it's got a crazy difference in nutrients to the uh, green stuff, because the, uh, the color is only skin deep. But... Every little bit counts. And I don't know that it tastes any different, so. And it's got a very beautiful, striking appearance in a lot of dishes if you use the purple cabbage. And you can do fun chemistry experiments with it because the purple coloration in the cabbage is a acid base indicator. It will turn a light cyan blue in alkaline conditions. And it'll turn, I think it turns orange when it's very, very acidic. Like, way more acidic than you'd ever have it in food. Okay, cabbage, meat bowl. I 
and then I'm going to need some carrot. I always like to put some little carrot in my slaw, and usually it's just cabbage and carrot are the only vegetables I put in. Uh, way more cabbage than carrot, obviously. This is my last carrot, but I don't even need the whole thing, so... Carrot adds a different kind of crunch, and of course, a contrast in color to your slaw. And I don't know how to do a proper julienne. I have never learned that. And I'm always afraid of cutting my fingers when I do it my way, which is the dumb way. <laughs> So I end up with little shards of carrot instead of a nice, neat julienne. Someday I probably should learn how to do a proper julienne. Of something like a carrot. Carrot, I can do it with like a daikon. Um, but it's because they're so large, you can get a nice flat edge on them. Carrots are just kind of awkwardly small. And I end up not being able to get a full grip on them. My sniffly nose has me wondering when it's going to stop being sniffly, because I haven't smelled the pepper dust in quite a while now, but it's still making me sniffly. How's that pot doing over there? Everything good? Our onions and bell peppers are very softened. I'm going to let them keep sitting here, but they are definitely doing the things that I want them to do. The buffalo sauce did not separate. That's exactly what I was looking for. Um, that it would hold, hold its emulsion even if I let it rest. So that's a good sign. That's what I wanted to see. Give it a taste again. Ooh. <coughs> oh. 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 Wow. Okay. It's very punchy. It definitely should not be eaten straight. Oh. Don't take shots of buffalo sauce. Oh. It's, um... Very sharp and vinegary. It's definitely spicier since I added that last shot of uh, ground pepper in there. Oh, okay. I'm going to let both of those guys keep doing what they're doing because they're fine. We're going to season up, finish the slaw. Oh, there's a pepper seed in there. Um, Oops. 
thought I switched the camera. This camera. Uh, Dill. Some salt. Some sugar. Some black pepper. Some mayonnaise, some vinegar. We're going to use the cider vinegar for this one. I can find it in the back of my cupboard. I don't use it very often. Uh, I don't know how much to add. It's just it's just a matter of eyeballing it. Don't add too much because you can't take it out. And some good big scoop of mayonnaise. And stir. Fun part is the uh, sauce comes out pink when you're done with it because the vinegar leaches that color out of the red cabbage and it colorizes the sauce into this lovely pastel pink color. Okay, that looks about as good as it's going to get. Um, the carrots are a lot coarser than I like. I would I would have liked, but that's all on me. Put a few things away. Swap back over to our stove. Take a peek at our veggies there. They're at the point where I think I don't want to cook them anymore. So I'm going to take them off the heat, put them back there. Bring the sauce to the front. Turn off the back burner, turn the front burner down. Uh... And then this was my plan from the start. I'm going to take my sliced up bison meat, throw it in my buffalo sauce, and we have created buffalo buffalo. Should have done this not in a big chunk because I'm having a hard time getting an even coating. And switch to the silicone tongs. And we just need it to heat the, to, to warm the meat through and get it nice and smothered in the sauce. And then we can try to construct a sandwich. Okay, okay. 
transferring control back over to the countertop. Put that carrot there so I don't forget about it. I need to come up with longer ideas. This one's uh, going to be even shorter than the uh, the one on Tuesday. That one. Uh, I did not make my own rolls. I bought them from the store. Someday we'll make our own rolls. That'll be fun. I also need a plate. Intersect the camera. There you go. Split our sandwich open. I'm going to do that thing where you pull the middle out to give us a little bit more room for stuff. I'm just going to sort of wad that little middle piece up and eat it. So, our order of construction today we're creating a bed of the peppers and onions. will then be bedecked with our buffalo, 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 buffalo. Uh, let's see, that burner needs to be off. Which we will then top with... Oh, I should have constructed this directly on a on a sheet. Um, that's okay, we're going to do a little bit of transfer work here. Going to do a little bit of a transfer work here. I will... Just use aluminum foil. Come on. Come on. Box of aluminum foil. Should have constructed it directly over here, transferred it afterwards. Put you there. Cheese it up. I've got some Swiss cheese, which is not the recommended cheese. Ideally, this would be like a, a, a provolone. Ideally, this would be like uh, a squeezy cheese, like a, a a really processed American cheese. Um, but we are going to be putting it directly under the broiler. to 
get it to melt and to get it the slightly toasty bun. This is Swiss. I don't uh, the, the cheese I have available is Swiss. So I'm using Swiss. Uh, provolone is uh, the uh, the uh, the best option of the regular like readily available deli sliced cheeses. Uh, that super processed American cheese is the best option overall, just because it is the best melting cheese, hands down. Um, So we need to be careful because sitting under the broiler, we can easily burn stuff. And I expect the part of the bun that's sticking up to go kind of crispy on the edge as well. Hopefully the cheese melts before it does. So I'm, uh, we can go, we can switch over here because it's going to come out and go on right in that, right there when it comes out get my pot holder ready because it's going to be hot. I should get my drippy parts out of the way as well. I'm going to have to do a deep clean on that burner. I've been using it as a drip catcher. It's got drips all over it. Well, uh, I mean, that's part of the point is to make you hungry, make you want to jump in, join in, join along, make it yourself. This isn't something I can really share with you the process of because I have no way of giving a a camera view to point into the oven like that. I just have to stand around and peek at it. And then you'll get to see the finished results when I pull it out and not a moment sooner. <laughs> this is gonna be a messy sandwich too. Uh, uh, this is a, so the idea for the Thursday here is that people weren't showing up so much on Fridays. Um, Cause I guess people have things to do on Fridays and it's closer to Tuesday. So I can use up some leftovers, make something out of leftovers, which is what I'm doing today. Uh, but it occurs to me that using up leftovers typically doesn't take a lot of time and often doesn't involve any really engaging cooking. So I'm not sure if this experiment was a success. It is my very first Thursday. So the fact that there's almost no one here is not entirely surprising because there, there was no precedent and I only changed the schedule this week. Um, uh, changing the schedule, no doubt, throws off the few regular viewers I do have. I need to figure out, if I want this channel to grow, I'm gonna to need to figure out something else to do because I can't I can I don't think I can handle more than two cooking shows a week hmm. uh I'm not sure who the other viewer is there are a couple of bots here 
Uh, I recognize their names. But uh, I'm not sure. Uh, oh! Off! Out! Oh, there you go. Perfect timing. Got a, got a, got a teeny bit distracted, but damn, caught it just in time. Uh, let's get that constructed or plated neatly over here. Let's see, I need a. Another hot pad. I'll burn my countertop. Get this guy over here. How do I get you off of the... Without burning myself. Um, it's hot. The issue is that it's hot, uh, which was what I was going for. I'm going to use an awkward combination of bamboo tongs and a spatula. Aha! Uh -huh. Perfect. Um, what am I thinking? I threw the other pot over. Uh, that goes back to the stove because it's hot. We will accompany it on the plate with our pink slaw. Which hopefully doesn't form too much of a, a puddle. Uh, and that, I think, is our plated buffalo Buffalo Philly cheesesteak sandwich with pink slaw. It sure looks great. I need to take some pictures of it. Let me grab my uh, let me grab my camera, take some pictures of it before I rip into it. Then I will pop right back over with it. Oops. So, duck out of frame with it. Get some nice glamour shots over here. Then I will bring it right back. Cut it in half, show you a cross section, take a bite, tell you how it is. I imagine it's going to be spicy. I guess we're going to find out together. The cheese melted just right. The edges of the bun, very toasty. That's probably enough glamour shots. It also gives it a chance to cool off enough to uh, handle. Slaw juice is leaning, drifting towards my bun. So we, we sort of fold it in half and tuck to keep all the stuff in there. Mm. 
it's juicy. Oh, look at that sandwich. Take a bite and see how it came out. Hmm. Hmm. Um, it's not as spicy as I had feared when I tasted the sauce by itself, which is good because that was too spicy. But with all the rest of this, it's hitting that perfect buffalo. I'm sorry, I moved my cam, moved my mic. It's hitting that buffalo wing sauce level, like good. It's very juicy, dripping over my hands. The uh, the meat did not get overcooked. The meat uh, cooked a little bit in the sauce, but it's pretty much just been warmed through. It's still very tender. The uh, peppers and onions have just a just a hint of texture to them, but they're very very tender, soft. Uh, the cheese is gooey and stretchy. Uh, that crisp edge on the bun is actually. Really, a uh, really nice textural contrast because it's it's this sort of hard crust on the outside that there's no other like crisp element in here. So that's a that was a good thing that I got that toast on there, even though it was I wasn't aiming for it. It improved the overall thing. Um, it's definitely got a lot of spice to it um, and a lot of rich vinegary flavor. Um, It came out great. Uh, I don't know why buffalo sauce is uh, relegated to chicken so often. Um, it's great uh, on this sort of a hybrid with a Philly cheesesteak. Worked perfectly. Uh, I suppose I should give the uh, slaw a taste for posterity as well. Yeah. I think I know what it's going to taste like because there's not a lot going on, but. I'll let you know anyways. Mm. There's your texture contrast. Fresh, crisp veggies. A good crunch in the, in the, uh, the cabbage and the carrot. Is definitely a needed texture contrast because this is all. Let's see, what's the British word for it? Sog, stodge. This is a gooey sandwich. So having a crisp, we're getting a little bit of a puddle from the uh, slaw sauce, but having a crisp vegetable. That's a little bit creamy. It's got a bright bright flavor to it good compliment probably also could do a, a pickle on the side if you didn't want the slaw serve a similar purpose my slaw is always a bit more acidic than like a packaged slaw so yeah i i call that a success i'm i'm proud of that one uh I got to use up that that meat without just like chucking it on top of something or eating it straight and cold, which is great. Hmm. I would probably make this again on purpose, not just to use up leftovers, but properly. This is a good sandwich. Uh, anyways, yeah, that's, um, that was my end result. I, I would like to enjoy this while it's still hot and gooey. So we're going to sign off soon, shortly, while I, uh, switch over here. Uh, this is the, 
this is the awkward part that I would like to somehow figure out how to fix. Uh, transition the cooking stream into an short eating thing where I can chit chat while I uh, have dinner, but I I don't have a way to do that without unplugging everything and interrupting everything. Uh, so we're going to do what I usually do, and I'm going to raid on to a channel. On Tuesday, I uh, got a recommendation to raid to a new channel, which turned out to be great. Oh, Chemical. Hi, Chemical. Uh, I was just uh, just wrapping up. Did you see the... Uh, did you see the thing here? There'll be nice pictures of it posted, but uh, it's a it's a quite the quite the thing. It's um a buffalo buffalo cheesesteak sandwich. So it's leftover bison meat from Tuesday. I made my own hot buffalo sauce, tossed the bison meat in the warm buffalo sauce, and then it's got really soft sautéed bell peppers and onions, Swiss cheese, toasted the whole thing. So yes, two buffaloes. Buffalo the animal and buffalo the sauce. I was thinking, um, I've noticed looking at my analytics, so as long as long as you're here, as long as we're talking about this, um, I was thinking um, maybe I should start a little bit later because almost nobody is here for the beginning part, and I peak a little bit later, and I think it might be easier for people to find it if I went just like started a little bit later. But uh, so I'll have to think about that. If I do something that takes longer, though, that would then push me way out. The problem I'm having really is that my uh, my cooking adventures are all variable length, and I'm not never quite sure. I I want to I I'd rather have a fixed ending point than a fixed starting point. But I don't know how to how to pull that off when I don't know necessarily how long things are going to take. Um. Something to think about for me. Um, as I was saying, <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> um, we might learn. We might learn how the algorithms work. Um, I just saw a an article in some somewhere that the European Union. Okay, take care. Have good food. Um. The European Union just passed a law that uh, something about disclosing how the algorithms operate for big social media sites, specifically targeting YouTube and Facebook. Uh, bye, Tobiasa. Thanks for hanging out. I'll be back uh, next Tuesday. Same time if you want to hang out. Um, anyways, uh, before I get off on a, a, a mad tangent, um, I was just about to drop off a raid. And I was just saying that la on Tuesday, I got suggested by, by Chemical, uh, a new channel to raid, and that worked out great. Um, so... I could try that again, ask for recommendations from the friends, or we could go drop off since I'm on a new day and there are people streaming who I watch that I've never rated before because they've never been on at um, one of my days. We could go visit somebody else like Billy or Hecky. They're both on. I've never rated either of them. Uh, 
What are they playing? Heck, he's playing Outer Wilds. Billy's playing No Man's Sky. And Sal is still just chatting. And none of my other follows. She's not controlling. Okay. Let's see what that one looks like. Uh She's not controlling looks like they're just wrapping up because it says good night thanks for watching on their channel. So that's probably not an ideal one to go drop off right now. Um And yeah, officially offline. Okay. Um In that case, let's go bother uh, I don't really want to watch No Man's Sky. Let's go bother Hecky. I was in Hecky's channel a little bit earlier while I was uh prepping myself. So uh I'm just going to head right back in. Um, as always, as usual, I don't have a raid message, so we're just going to we're just going to go for it. Um, I because of my new schedule, I will be back next Tuesday rather than, rather than doing it tomorrow. Uh, we're still feeling out what days are good. And I, I've got a bunch of ideas for big projects, and i got to just pull the trigger on one of them rather than all these last-minute ideas that I keep doing. The last-minute ideas... Uh, raid, raid, raid. That's a good one. I'm going to steal that. I have BTTV. I haven't chosen any emotes. I haven't really done any of the back end stuff. Uh, I just copied what you had there. Um, what was I saying? Tuesday. Pull the trick on a big project. See you then. Five, oh, Yuvia.